Good morning, I'm Wayworn Worm, and welcome to my channel. And welcome to the first episode of the Star Trek Adventures TNG Living Campaign Decision Point. Captain's Log, Stardate 4840.1 the USS Thunderchild has been searching for a missing science vessel, the SS Tesla, which went missing six weeks ago while cataloging anomalies in an unstable region of the Shackleton Expanse. This region is notorious for an unusual number of temporal and spatial anomalies, some benign and others extremely dangerous. Eighteen hours ago, the Thunderchild picked up a plasma trail, likely from a damaged ship. The Oregon system has two Class M planets, both with populations protected under General Order 1, the Prime Directive. Oregon 2 has a primitive civilization, equivalent to medieval Earth. The residents call themselves the Slithar and are a violent and warlike culture. The residents of Oregon 3, who call themselves Lormines, are quite different, being a mammalian species resembling humanoid lemurs that are noted for a peaceful and communal society. Their technology is equivalent to mid-21st century Earth, just pre-warp tech, but are still covered by the Prime Directive. The plasma trail from the SS Tesla leads directly toward Organ 3. Captain Othidi Zashran massaged her eyes hard as she sat at her desk in her ready room. Her first officer, Commander Yolin, sat opposite her, waiting impassively for her to speak. Let's go over the facts of this mission so far again, Yolin. Yolin nodded curtly and began. The SS Tesla, a civilian science vessel that carried six crew, went missing six weeks ago. Narendra Station dispatched us to find the ship if we could. We found a plasma trail leading directly to Organ 3, which we are now orbiting. Organ 3 is a Class M planet with a native population that appears to be on the edge of discovering warp tech. Our main deflector has been modified to transmit interference, so anything that scans us will just think it's normal interference and not bother. Scans of the planet reveal that the SS Tesla crash-landed mostly intact in a wilderness region about 200 clicks from the Lormine capital city. No humanoid light forms are shown in the vicinity. The energy fluctuations around the planet are interfering with the sensors, making it difficult to differentiate between known Federation life forms and the native Lormines. The captain's headstocks drooped slightly at all of that. And is that all? No, ma'am. The scan also shows an extremely powerful energy source about five clicks underground, not far north of the capital city. And finally, due to the unusual energy fluctuations around the planet, communicators are ineffective and transporters are too dangerous to use. So, in short, we have a mostly intact ship that has crashed on a planet protected by the Prime Directive but with no living members of the crew within a close proximity of the ship. Although, given that it's been up to six weeks since they crashed, that doesn't mean anything at all. And the only way to try and locate them would be to send an away team in a shuttle. That about sums it up, ma'am. This time, Athidi massaged her temples, wishing that the Venture or Bellerophon had been given this mission. The three ships had just been assigned to Narendra Station with the mission to start exploring the Shackleton Expanse more than it had been previously, and it was just her luck that the Thunderchild's first mission was to get stuck in a mission where the Prime Directive would be a weight over everything they did, rather than the idealistic philosophy that it normally was. After the moment or two of self-pity was over, she looked at Yolin. Okay, you will lead the away team. Who do you need and why? 
All of a sudden, Yolen looked much more animated than he had the entire meeting as he answered his captain's question. Obviously, I need Lieutenant Commander Adelina Ramsey. When we find the crew of the SS Tesla, they'll probably either need medical attention or an autopsy to figure out how they died. I can't think of anyone better suited to that than the chief medical officer. Then I'm going to need Captain... Then I'm going to need Lieutenant Commander Paula Duar to see if the Tesla is fixable. Again, the chief engineer is the best choice for that. I would like Lieutenant Garib... I would like Lieutenant Garib the Osnian, just in case things go wrong down on the planet and we need to defend ourselves. And finally, I would like Lieutenant Latara both for his excellent piloting skills and as secondary security in case anything goes wrong. So you would like the heads of three departments and our primary helmsman. Yes, ma'am. My goal with that selection was to keep the away team down to the absolute minimum possible people to hopefully allow us to quickly get in and out without being noticed. A five-person team would have a very high likelihood of being able to do that. I'm asking for the heads of the departments because they are the very best that we have on the ship. If they were not the best, they wouldn't be the heads of their department. That sounds like almost Vulcan levels of logic there. I didn't think that was a trait common to Denobulans. In fact, I seem to remember in my studies of your species, they tend toward larger groups as possible. Yolin winced at those remarks. Generally speaking, yes ma'am. We do tend toward larger groups. The more people, the less likely something goes wrong. The more people, the less likely something going wrong will snowball into a catastrophe. In this particular case, more people will raise the risk more than we would benefit from their presence. Athedi nodded thoughtfully and considered what Yolan said. After a minute or so, she responded. I agree with your assessment. A five-person team would be the best, and if we're keeping numbers that low, it only makes sense to provide the people who are best at the skills you'll most likely need. She nodded her assent. You can have that away team. Thank you, ma'am. I will let them know, and we should be ready for departure within the hour. Lieutenant Litara looked over at the people in the shuttle. It's going to be a bumpy ride, that's for sure. He looked over to his co-pilot, Lieutenant Commander Paula Duar. If you can compensate for the energy fluctuations, that would be most helpful. She simply nodded and prepared herself for the job ahead. Very soon, it was clear that Litar was not kidding. The shuttle bounced around in high ener energetic turbulence. The shuttle bounced around in high energetic turbulence, with Latara seeming to hit as many pockets of the high energy as he could in an effort to keep the flight as smooth as possible. Paula kept making slight adjustments to Latara's flight path to avoid the worst bits, but even with both of them working their magic, it was almost not enough. Eventually, after one of the most eventful shuttle rides any of the passengers had ever been on, they safely sat down about 20 meters from the wreckage of the SS Tesla. The crew exited the shuttle in a clearing that was about 50 meters in radius centering on the Tesla. The charred remains of enough wood were left to show that this clearing did not exist before the ship crashed. Paula was the one who broke the silence that fell over the small team as they viewed the crash ship. The Tesla is a small civilian version of the Raven-class science vessel, which means, she pointed at part of the ship, the crew cabin would be right there, and from the looks of it, it is pretty much intact. Yolin nodded. Okay, everyone, you know what to do. Paula, check how bad it actually is. Latara and Garib set up a perimeter. Adelina, check for any evidence of people. With his word, the team dispersed while Yolin began looking around the clearing. Paula walked over to the ship and started walking around the outside, getting her first impressions of the damage before she even entered. She stopped and looked closely at a couple of spots. Hmm, that's odd. 
she said to herself on more than one occasion. As she finished her walk around the entire outside of the SS Tesla, she was starting to believe that the damage she was seeing was not just from the crash landing. As of yet, she did not know what did cause the extra damage that she was seeing, but she would have staked a lot on the bet that the Tesla was not in perfect shape when it hit Organ 3's atmosphere. She entered the ship, which was only four decks and just all over a rather small ship. And as she looked around, she was more and more convinced of her thoughts from the outside. There was just too much damage that would not be something that should happen in a crash to ignore. The Tesla was damaged before it hit the planet. After a few minutes, Yolin called Adelina over to him. Adelina, come quick. There appears to be relatively fresh graves here. She jogged over and looked at the two fresh mums. I'd agree with that, sir. Taking out her medical tricorder, she quickly scanned the two. In this one, there's an Andorian, and the other one contains a human. Yolin nodded. Okay. So, the Andorian must be Ibob Thiviet, the geologist. The human could be Captain Forrest, Dr. Sherman, Dr. Grange, or Dr. Lort. So we can assume for the moment, at least when the crew left this clearing, for whatever reason they left it, Oramu Faz was still alive, as well as three of those humans that I named. We just don't know which three. Adelina nodded. That sounds about right. Oraimu is a trill, and I'm not seeing a trill in either grave, and it would be safe to assume that if there were any other graves in this area, they'd be left next to these two, at least if they needed more graves before leaving the area. Yolen sighed and went back to searching the clearing. He was pretty sure everything they were going to find at this point would lead toward the remaining crew having left the area. Possibly weeks, if not more than a month ago. The questions that... The questions that that possibility raised were, why did they leave? Where did they go? Who were they? And how long ago did they leave? Not too long after Pop... Not too long after, Paula went over to him to make her report. Sir, it looks like there was some heavy damage to the ship before the crash. But despite that, the warp core had been shut down, which is what prevented a warp core breach and the resulting antimatter explosion. Emergency power is still running. The ship is pretty much beyond repair. I'm not going to say that the Tesla will never fly again, but I would say that it would take a team weeks, and I don't see that the time, effort, and materials would be worth it to ever try that. There is more than just that, though, sir. Yolen raised an eyebrow at that. Yes, Paula? With the damage to the ship, I, I'm not sure how they would not have been picked up by the locals. It was very easy for us to hide everything from the local satellites and any possible ground scanning stations. But the reason why it was so easy for us is that everything is working and is in working condition. I think the Tesla was likely either fully adrift by the time they hit the atmosphere of Oregon 3, or they were quite close to adrift. Garib came up as she was finishing. Well, some good news, sir. The internal security sensors are still on and transmitting, which implies that someone is receiving the sensor readings, which then implies that both some members of the crew are alive and they know that Starfleet has arrived. Almost as soon as he said that, a sudden breathe... 
Almost as soon as he said that, a sudden breeze stirred up ash from the crash site as several flyers came out from the cover of the trees and settled on the ground nearby. Each vehicle disgorged a half a dozen humanoids. They were of slight build and, on average, shorter than humans, and were covered in a light coat of fur with large, lemur-like eyes. They moved with a graceful agility as they pointed energy weapons of some kind in the direction of the away team. Thank you so much for listening to the first episode of Decision Point. Tune in tomorrow for the next episode of Astra Imperia. And then next Tuesday, we're going back to the original series episode, Adrift Part 2. And the second episode of Decision Point will be in two weeks. Thank you.